Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. I recently passed the two year mark on my Bull TV and a lot of you seem to be interested in the overall cost of ownership and the cost of driving an electric vehicle and I decided to go ahead and tally up my fueling costs for the first two years that I owned the Bolt EV. The way I pay for my electricity probably isn't the same as the way a lot of you pay for your electricity. I'm in a situation where I cannot charge at home. I do not have any sort of hookup. I live in an apartment. There's really no way for me to pay for my power by plugging in at home. And that really is the cheapest way uh, to drive and own an electric vehicle because at that point, you don't really need to rely on expensive public charging or pay for charging elsewhere. Instead, because my primary charging location is work, I pay about $3 a day. Now, because that's per session and not mile related, I could drive 100 miles on $3 or 200 miles on $3. Outside of the work week and when I travel, I do rely solely on the public charging network and that is a bit more expensive than the average driver would typically pay if they were charging at home. Now the one exception to this is when I do visit my family and our property in Northern California, I can charge there, but because it's not metered in a way that I can easily track, I did have to estimate those numbers. So I typically make a trip about once every month and while I'm there, I do some driving. So I just estimated about 100 kilowatt hours of energy that I use from the plug when I'm up there each month. So let's dive into the numbers. The first question you probably want to know is, well, in two years, how many miles did you actually drive? Well, I drove just under 80,000 miles. So that's quite a bit of miles and a lot more than the average user would probably drive. So how much total did I pay for electricity, charging costs, membership costs to the various charging networks? So it doesn't really mean a whole lot to say that, you know, it was $3,100 for two years worth of driving, but at 79,687 miles, I was paying on average 3.9 cents per mile traveled. Now where does that rank in terms of cost of ownership? Well really that's up to you. I don't know what you currently drive, how much you currently pay for your electricity, how much you currently pay for your gasoline, but a typical benchmark would be something like a 50 mile per gallon internal combustion engine vehicle at $3 per gallon gasoline on average for the United States. Given those specs, you would be paying about six cents per mile. So my driving and my total travel cost in the Bull TV is about 30% less than it would cost to say drive a Prius on $3 per gallon gasoline. So whether that's good or bad is really up to the interpreter but I feel that it's about in line with what I was expecting. Keep in mind though, I could actually lower my cost of driving even more because I could skip days at work that would save me $3 a day. A lot of my expenses right now do come from this channel where I actually use chargers that I might not normally use or I use them in a way that I might not normally use. And so that will add up in terms of fees. We are installing a solar panel system in the property up in Northern California. So when I do charge up there, that will actually be a sunk cost built into the solar panels. So the cost of my driving is actually probably going to get cheaper over time. But again, for me, and this is a thing that I want to emphasize because I think people with electric vehicles uh, focus too much on the cost savings. and. I don't know that that's actually an area where you do want to focus. To me, if you're talking about cost savings, it's not about you as an individual, right? Every gallon of gasoline you burn is going to add nearly 20 pounds of CO2 to the atmosphere. And by conservative estimates, each 20 pounds of CO2 
has a societal and environmental cost of between a dollar to two dollars. So that's a huge amount of savings in terms of society if you're reducing the carbon dioxide emissions by that much. But for me also owning an electric vehicle, it has more to do with the driving dynamics, the instant torque. When I do my trips up to the mountains, like when I visited the Grand Canyon and an internal combustion engine vehicle would be seeing 20, 30% less power, less responsiveness and consuming more fuel, my vehicle was completely unaffected by the altitude. Those sorts of things, the self-reliance, the ability to put a solar panel array on your property and not actually pay anything for fuel from that point forward, the reliability, all of those things feed into why I got an electric vehicle, not necessarily just the cost of driving and the cost of ownership, but for someone like me, and if this describes you, someone who drives a lot of miles, saving two, three, four, five cents per mile off the cost of some of the cheapest internal combustion engine vehicles available, well, that might be compelling to you as well. But for me, that's sort of a secondary benefit of owning an electric vehicle. But I did want to share with you all exactly what I've seen in my two years of ownership, knowing that most of the costs of my charging right now are actually coming from using the public DC fast charging infrastructure, even though that doesn't necessarily represent the most number of miles that I'm logging. So let me know what you think. Have you been tracking your costs in an electric vehicle? If you have, what are they? Maybe share them in the comments below. If you're investigating electric vehicles as a possible option, how important are the fueling costs to you? Is that a deciding factor for you? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel and thank you for watching.